Another week, boys, and another twab. This week at Bungie, Titan's domination continues. Guardian Games continues into the second week, and after a good showing by Hunters on day one, it's been all Titans all day, every day. The book readers haven't scored a win yet, but are optimistic they can rally. After day one, we saw a lot of players asking about score weighting since the results seem to play out like the population classes predicted. Since Titans have been relentlessly destroying the other classes, we have seen players asking if there may be some other issues going on. As a hunter, I too am in disbelief as I watch our flag try to bury itself into the ground. We've been double checking behind the scenes and digging into the data to get a better picture of what's going on. Here's senior designer Peter Serrett to share some of our findings. So from Peter, when we first started planning Guardian Games, we knew there were more hunters than any other class in the population and we had to do something to account for that so that completion would be fair. Fair can mean different things. Our goal was that each class should have an equal chance to win regardless of its size and that participating in the event should never hurt your team. That last part is important because it ruled out the simplest approach of basing results on the average contribution per class. While this would effectively normalize the classes based on how many people participate, it would also create a situation where participating at anything but a maximum level could actually harm your team by bringing its average down. Dipping your toe into the event by depositing a single bronze medal per day would be worse for your team than just staying at home. So instead of normalizing base on participating players, we decided to normalize base on the pool of potential players. For each class, we counted every character who played at least one activity over the 30 days prior to the event, then divided that result by the total across all three classes. The result is the scaling factor that we apply to each medal deposited. This method means that medals from Warlocks and Titans count more counteracting hunters population advantage and ensures that even a minimal level participation helps your team the more members of your class that show up to play the better your class will do it also means we don't have to worry about players creating a ton of dummy alt accounts once the event begins to try to tank a team's chances on day one of the event hunters won not simply because there are more of them but because a greater percentage of them showed up and contributed on day two though titans arrived and began outperforming hunters warlocks are no doubt considering all the angles and planning for the right moment to strike. This graph shows how much each class actually participated relative to how many characters each class had during the prior 30 days of the event beginning. You can see the tight correlation between more bodies in the game and the outcome of the competition. All right, so let's just take a look real quick. April 21st being the first day, Hunter's getting the win, and oh boy, yeah, Titans. It's almost as if our participation is actually ramped up throughout the event. This is kind of wild. Like I knew we had it in us, fellas. I'm just saying. Y'all make me hella proud. But that's not the whole story. Titans haven't just been overwhelming the competition with a flood of muscle mass. They've also been out depositing the other classes on an individual basis. On average, each Titan has contributed more medals to their cause than each the Hunter or Warlock. This was even true on day one. But on that day, there were enough Hunters participating that they made up in bodies what they lack in output. So from this graph, we can see that Titans are outperforming on two fronts. A higher percentage of their ranks are showing up to participate, and when they do, each of them is depositing more medals than their competitors. If Hunters or Warlocks up their game and get more of their compatriots to pitch in, there's still time to steal the momentum. We've seen the reports of the shenanigans with players finding glitches to turn in more medals, or even by dedicating enough to delete characters to be able to put in extra medals for their team. We dug into the data to see if this was something to be concerned about, and found neither case was having an impact on the results. It's also worth mentioning how the flags in the tower work. At the start of the day, all teams are even, and so the flags begin at the midpoint of the pulse. This represents equilibrium, where all teams have an even 33.33% of all accumulated points for that day. As medals get deposited and teams move away from equilibrium, the flags adjust. We expected the teams would stay fairly close to each other and that all action would occur in a narrow band around the equilibrium point. If a team ever pulls 5% ahead with a total of 
0.33% or more of all the points, their flag will hit the top of the pole. Likewise, a team dropping 5% behind at 28.33% or less will hit the bottom of their pole. If a team goes beyond these values, their flag will just stay pegged at the top or bottom until the values come back into that plus or minus 5% window. We don't plan on making any changes that will affect the results in any way. Our goal has always been to create a competition that is decided by how much each class engages with the event and not which class has the largest roster. Titans are currently engaging the most, but we will see if they keep it up. Kind of wild, but makes sense. Let's just be real. Warlocks and Titans obviously have the most contribution going on right now. A lot of the hunters in the current player base are PvP players. And I'm telling you, fellas, as soon as hunters found out that the weapon for Guardian Games was an exotic machine gun, they were like, all right, we're out, man. The hell with this stuff. That's exactly how it played out here, though. Even though many of the builds we've shown this past season are hunter builds inside of PvE, and they are excellent builds, again, majority of hunters inside of Destiny play PvP and only PvP. Either way it goes, big shout out to my Titans, man. Really, really. And let's just be real. You know, I, I mentioned it last week. We knew we had a hell of a task in front of us. Called an emergency council meeting with Bife, who is, by the way, the head of the Warlocks. And I told him the dire situation that we were in. And the man himself even said, listen, we can't let this happen. Literally words from his mouth. I would rather the darkness win before hunters. So ultimately, we all ended up joining forces, pulling a fast one on the hunter class, but it had to be done. Now, moving on. Evolving seasons. Oh, yeah. Now we're about to get into the juicy stuff. Last week, we touched on the upcoming trials of Osiris changes and how we are tackling cheating issues in Destiny 2. This week, we want to talk about our seasonal model and some improvements we are working on to make it better. Here's one of the creative directors, Evan Nikolai, to share details on what to expect. I think that's Nikolai. That Nikolai? I was thinking Nikolai or Nikolish. Evan Nikolish. Hey, everyone. We've collected lots of great feedback over the last several months about our seasonal model. Luke outlined some of our thinking back in February, and today we want to look at how this vision is guiding action in Destiny 2 Year 4. Oh, baby. The story continues. We've been making progress carrying the over overarching narrative season over season in Destiny 2. Saint 14 and Osiris led to the Warmind, which leads to Redacted. It's not perfect yet. The bridges between seasons can definitely be improved, and we can do a better job of recognizing prior season's narrative threads in the active season. In year four, we're going to build a better interconnected narrative, and more importantly, let players be a part of that narrative no matter when they enter the current year. This means if you start playing in March 2021, you can go back and experience the season 12 and season 13 narrative content. We want our stories to feel more cohesive, flow with meaningful momentum, season over season, and lead to an exciting climax each year. That said, for a narrative to have weight, there needs not only to be meaningful changes, but also a meaningful way to experience the history of the world. We haven't preserved enough history for a player who comes in mid-year to have any concept of what came in the year's prior season. As a result, players can feel left behind later in the year and unable to experience these stories or to acquire prior season's weapons and gear. The Forsaken Season Pass allows its content to build up over the course of the year, and that's where we're heading in year four. Okay, that's good. Kind of what I got from this, and of course, I hope you guys picked up on the acquisition of season's weapons and gear, which I'm sure they're about to get into, but obviously they're having an issue with new players grasping the narrative. I would say I kind of grasp it, you know, for the most part. Like, I know the characters. I know what's up. About once a month or, or every other month, I take about a 30 to 45 minute bath with Bife. I just sit in there, you know, listen to what's happening in the lore, get a good grasp while also simultaneously relaxing. It's kind of therapeutic, fellas. But I will say, just kind of just going back to what Bungie said, making the narrative something easy for new players to be a part of and incorporating them into this is a good thing. At the same time, though, I think that this is not the model. I think the way the narrative is being portrayed to us is not bad, but I feel like it could be better. Now, this is someone that might be asking for too much. I know this is a live game. This isn't Halo, man. Same developer, epic storylines. I guess I just want too much. All right, I wouldn't mind a narrative though that got a little darker, went a little deeper. We said it last week. I want to see some red wedding action, some political games. Why is it? It's just darkness versus light and that's it. Come on, there's got to be a little more than that. There's a little more juice there. And I wouldn't mind if we just grabbed one character and, and just went off, just dove into that storyline. Even if there's not even 
playable content surrounding that narrative and wherever that may lead us, wouldn't it be nice to just walk the footsteps that Kate walked or Drifter or Shax or anything? Like Bungie is literally sitting on a gold mine of lore here. We don't necessarily have to have an activity to play for our characters with each and every one of those narratives. Just having an understanding of the narrative would enrich everything. And I think diving into the narratives of those characters that are so popular inside of Destiny is an excellent way of doing that. Now moving on, activities will last the entire year. Beginning in season 12, the core parts of the activity experience will live on after the season has ended. For late players joining in future seasons, we want to give you the opportunity to jump straight into the heart of older activity experiences without all the other previous season specific requirements. We want to remove any competing and distracting element with the new active season, which has its own ritual progression, but the actual activity experience stays. Let me give an example of how this might work in the future using Season of Dawn to illustrate. With our new approach, when Season of the Dawn concluded, we would have left behind the Saving Saint 14 quest, the exotic quest to acquire Devil's Ruin, and Bastion, and the Sundial activity. Now, we would sunset the Obelisk experience to reduce the clutter in the quest log and to keep bounty quantity from inflating across the game and deprecate the fractaling currency so it could be safely removed from the player's inventory. The Obelisk were time intensive and we do not want to overload players choices in engaging in the current seasonal ritual versus the past seasonal ritual. This is our current plan for year four, but like everything else, these plans and exactly how content persists will change and evolve as we work. Destiny 2 will have moments woven into the overall universe narrative where we remove old content and allow for new content and stories to grow in its place. As we said in the past, we cannot continue to grow Destiny universe indefinitely. There's a lot of reasons for this, technical, resourcing, as well as from an overarching universe design standpoint. Finding the balance of creating and maintaining content in our ongoing narrative is a necessary part of continuing to build on Destiny 2. Okay, that's very interesting. So things like Vex Offensive, Sundial, those activities will stay, as well as the exotic quests, which is probably equally as big, considering that it's normally like a season there in between where you cannot access those exotics. So having those exotic quests, which are normally tied to those activities to still be present is a way for any player, whether they jump in mid-season or in later seasons, to still obtain those exotics, which is a good thing. On the other side of things, though, getting rid of something like the obelisk kind of makes me wonder how something like the sundial would even work, right? Like you had to do the obelisk upgrading and other things in order to increase your rewards inside of the sundial. I don't know. Before we jump ahead, let's just see that this next section might explain this rewards remain. With the seasonal activities persisting, a player will need a good reason to play them. The reason is in the rewards and we are planning on carrying a season's reward forward throughout the year. In today's Destiny 2, history is expressed by the things you have collected. We want players to be a part of that chase no matter when they enter the year and to reduce the pressure of collecting everything during a single season. In the short term, to acknowledge this step forward that we are taking, we are adding some selected weapons from season 8, 9, and 10 to the Ingram that would drop during season 11. Okay, long term, we want to make sure that the rewards we release each season are available to players throughout the year. Continuing with our Season of the Dawn example, the rewards that came out of the Sundial would continue to drop from the Sundial. How the drops will occur will change as narratively Osiris has left and we have removed the obelisk, but weapons and gear would still be present. This is the obvious solution, but it suffers from a design perspective in creating narrow pursuits focus. Having the rewards in just one location oversimplifies the pursuit game and has the same effect of limiting the ways you can play Destiny. Our focus is to broaden and provide multiple ways for you to earn past season rewards. In addition to the rewards coming from seasonal activities, we are thinking of having the seasonal rewards be available to earn in core modes of play as well as strikes, crucible, and gamut. If you're getting tired of playing sundown, you have the opportunity to jump into crucible or strikes and pick up a couple of the season of dawn weapons we've handpicked. As the seasons roll on, the rewards will continue to get added to these core activities and as a player, you can tackle the pursuits at your own pace in your preferred mode of play and feel the world growing in terms of rewards. To summarize, we're going to move towards seasons that can be experienced all year. The Destiny experience should grow each year after an expansion, having a meaningful evolving world and a bunch of reasons to 
play. And then each year, we should take a step forward into a new expansion. We've done this better in the past, and we're going to mine from that going forward to make our future seasons that much more compelling. There will be much, much more year four talk in the coming months. Well, all right, fellas, this is actually a big change because previously I was really concerned. The way everything was being designed was you had to be there. You had to play that season in order to get those things. Now, obviously I'm playing a bunch. I mean, I'm playing every single season, but the issue that I found was that there was tons of people coming and commenting on previous reviews of weapons asking, how can I get this weapon? Which normally led us to leave a comment that was pinned that you could not get this weapon anymore, which is a major bummer. Now, in some ways, I understand what Bungie was thinking. They were thinking that people were going to go, oh, I better get on it this season and make sure I'm playing in order to access those weapons or access those rewards. But it definitely seemed to have the opposite effect. On top of that, for some of us out there, we were just keeping weapons regardless of the role simply because you couldn't get them anymore. I have a ton of Vex offensive weapons as well as weapons from the Siege of the Dawn. They're not even that greatly rolled. They're okay, but especially my Vex offensive weapons, they're pretty garbage. And I only kept them because we can't obtain them right now. Now, there's a certain level of rarity, right? Which is becoming to a vault space nightmare. By the way, Bungie, we need more vault space. But the point is, is that this model developed more stress than it did desire to play the season. And it also constantly outdated previous gods, right? Especially exotic quests. Now, moving on, bounty hunters. Last week, we also told you we would address the growing concerns with the role of bounties and what our plans are to make changes. Here's design lead Tyson Green to tell you more. So from Tyson, bounties have come to a central mechanic for any repeatable activity content in Destiny. So much so that we've seen them move towards being mandatory chores rather than opportunities to optimize. We've had some changes come to help bring things back into balance. We're shifting away from weekly FOMO. XP and season rank gains are currently balanced around large contributions from weekly bounties. The intent here was to provide a large amount of progress for small amount of focus play every week. But weeklies fall down here because you lose out on big chunks of progress if you miss a week. And they are strained between too little progress for single character players and too much repetitive work for triple character players. While the specifics are still under development, as early as season 12, we want to make this better by replacing weekly bounties with a mechanism that provides players with a set of non-expiring and account scope objectives each week that grant lots of seasonal rank progress, more than the weeklies they replace. That way, the return on effort is better, more consistent between players. So optional XP optimization, not critical path. Bounties have found their way into the critical path of some seasonal pursuits, becoming primary sources for seasonal progress. Starting in Season 12, we plan to steer away from this model in general. Bounties should focus on being an optional way to optimize for more or faster core progressions like XP or powerful gear by way of challenges. When it comes to optimization, we recognize there is a very blurry line between optional and mandatory, and there's no perfect balance that works for everyone. But we think the balance is tilted too far towards towards feeling like you need to do bounties to unlock seasonal content. So we're going to take the step to tilting back. So for our event bounties, our seasonal free events are also currently heavily utilizing bounties in their design. We have seen the feedback around Guardian Games being the most recent source of frustration with too much emphasis on completing bounties to participate in the event. We don't plan on making any changes to the current event as it's ending in a few weeks, but are already looking at plans to adjust the role bounties will play in the future events. Now some quality of life and improvements. We don't like that every play session starts with 10 to 15 minutes of loading up on bounties. We want to make it easier to grab bounties when you want to do them. To that end, we are looking at a mechanism like allowing bounties to be accessed directly from the destination map. These are a bit further out, think season 13, but are on the roadmap. We also don't like it when a bounty you've nearly completed in the middle of a previous day's play session expires right in the middle of today's sessions. While we still see expiration as a necessary mechanism to keep half completed bounties from hanging around forever, we're going to relax some of the expiration times in season 11 to give more time to close out yesterday's 19 out of 20 grenade kills. Speaking of grenade kills, in general, we're dialing into the time to complete bounty objectives to be more consistent. Unexpectedly, time-consuming objectives sneak in from time to time. We generally want objectives in upcoming seasons to be a bit less restrictive in terms of how you play. All right, guys, so those are your bounty changes. I don't know, man. Like, I know a lot of people say they want to go back to D1. People are like, oh, I remember getting an Ayas Luna 
at the end of a crucible game and how much i love that yeah i also remember playing like over a thousand games and the only is luna i ever got was one and it had crappy rolls on it so as much as we like to romanticize things inside of d1 it wasn't perfect either i know a lot of people want bounties to not be the sole focus of the season the problem is this is what happens when the way we elevate difficulty in this game is based on your light level your power level you want to do 10 50s well you got to be at least 10 25 you want to make life easier on yourself you better pump those bounty numbers up get that level a little bit higher but that's the issue right is that a lot of the difficulty comes from our power levels which is why we now have grandmaster instead of master master was becoming too easy but understand that's still a very small population number there's still a lot of people in this game that have never even played a master nightfall much less a grandmaster nightfall now i know what a lot of people want they want to just play the game and be rewarded they want to lay on the w key baby or forward on their joystick hit the punch button and watch the sweet loot rain the problem is is say we go out there and say hey the hell with bounties everything in the game just gives you a hell of a lot of experience well then you're just gonna have people farming up certain activities that are the fastest to farm right so bungie's definitely gonna have to really taper things right depending on the activity the completion rates how fast you can actually complete it on an optimal basis those xp rates will definitely need to be dependent either way it goes all of these things what it really boils down to is they want to make the game more desirable as much as i like to pick up bounties yes that's great at the end of the day Bungie if you want to make things more desirable for me you just got to make the loot rain baby and I'm not saying just give out the loot I'm talking make new loot when you batch it up and you batch it out we see new loot new seasonal perks you want to see more people contributing to the core playlist gambit strikes crucible bring back pinnacle or ritual weapons I don't care what you say fellas pinnacle and ritual weapons were the driving forces that kept people in those core playlists Bungie hasn't actually jumped down and said anything yet but ritual weapons or better yet pinnacle weapons considering that sun setting is now a thing has got to make a return now guardians to the rescue for those that want to contribute to the bungee foundation for the sweet sweet emblems on top of just being a great human these folks right here will be streaming as bungee bounties got a couple of names here look at this mylan's on here yeah riot zk frostbolt and pure oh my god oh, i even see osk and fammy oh fellas Fammy's gonna be doing it. I'm gonna have to jump in on that. Fellas, that is your twam though for this week. Bungie does conclude this by giving us a Season of the Worthy wrap up. June the 9th will be the last day of the Season of the Worthy, where a number of activities, items, and triumphs will no longer be available to players. That list is this list. So if there's anything on this list that you still wanna get to, you might wanna get to it. Now, Cosmo concludes we hope we are able to give you a better understanding of Guardian games and our plans for improving seasons and bounties in the future. Next week, we plan to talk about the eververse feedback and some changes we'll be making to the store in future seasons cosmo all right thank you cosmo fellas let me know in the comments below what you think though really really i've said it before man i felt like the perfect model was forsaken i'm just saying everything that followed forsaken to me was the perfect model was it too much maybe but think about it they're just kind of retracting and going back to the same thing right can you still access black armory content yes can you still access season of the gambit i think the only things you can't really access is the narrative stuff right or can you i don't know season of opulence is still a thing though menagerie is still a thing so bungie's essentially kind of going back to that the difference though is that each one of those seasons were just chock full of content you gotta have that same level fellas that's my personal opinion forsaken was like giving us crack dude i'm just saying as a destiny community everything follows and forsaken for that entire year even though we complained it was fantastic pinnacles season after season raids other than season of the gambit we had a raid every single season so to me the formula was already perfect we were there they bungie really wanted to try out this monetization they wanted to try out this season by season and i know they really want to emphasize narrative you know i think narrative is good but to me i think narrative is something that should be conveyed in the annual expansion that's when you can go balls out that's when you can and do crazy stuff and have just little small things throughout the year that could be a part of that narrative or even be separate maybe just something giving a little more depth to an aspect of destiny that is intriguing and interesting all on its own but as far as like this evolving role narrative i would rather bungie just go all out on the big annual expansions i'm talking like taken king level forsaken level shadow keep wasn't that level it was not on the narrative level that those expansions were on so guys let me know in the comments below what you think though fellas and ladies thank you all for coming and watching and as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.